Hello, in this video I'm gonna show you how to track data changes using insert update delete triggers and who actually did a data change. Before continue, if you don't wanna miss my future videos and support my channel, please subscribe. Okay, let's go back to trigger stuff. For this task, I will create two tables. One main table with product name, price, comment, who added a record and when it was done. And the next table is history table, where we will automatically track with triggers what the product was, what the old price and new price, old comment, new comment, who touched the record when it was done and what action been taken as an example, insert, update or delete. In between of these two tables, a trigger will be set up. So basically, the trigger will copy data from main table to history table based on what action is taken on the main table. So let's create two tables mentioned above. And the trigger. The trigger will execute after insert update or delete statement executed on main table. It finds what action was, for instance, if it's insert, then the inserted data will be replicated to history table with action taken insert. So we know that the data was inserted and in case delete or update statement executed, we will accordingly mark those records as update or delete. Let's create the trigger. And for this test, I will create a procedure. Let's imagine that application or API talks to SQL Server through service account. So SQL Server itself has no chance to know who actually doing the data change. For this reason, the procedure will submit not only data about product price comment, but also sends data who is doing the change. Inside procedure, we have merge statement. What checks if product doesn't exist, it will insert into the main table. If product exists, but the price or the comment is submitted, then update those two. And the last thing, if no price and no comment were added, then delete the record. Let's create the procedure. And let's run the test. So the first, we will insert a new record to the main table. As you can see, new record got inserted and trigger catched the insert operation. It finds that new product got inserted with price and comment and it was done by user one at this time. Now let's try to update the product details, price and comment by another user. The details updated in the main table and the trigger catched update statement. So now we see that all price and new price and what was old comment and new comment. This initiated by user 2. And the last action, let's try to delete the record because we are not providing neither price or comment. And the initiator is user3. So the record got deleted, trigger catched delete statement. We see that product1 got deleted with its price and comment. But now what's happened? We still seeing user2 as initiator, but we expected to have user3. So why we don't see who deleted the record? It's simply because trigger replicates data from one table to another. So what we have in the main table, it's simply copy data and, and insert into the history table in our case. So how we can sort this? For that, I'm gonna use context info. Basically, I will update procedure so that the last touched by want to be only inserted into the main table, but also context for the session will be set to user information. Please take into account that we can't set a context for varchar data type. We must convert it to var binary. So we are setting up context. 
the, the rest merge statement without any changes. And for the trigger, we get context info back into a parameter. So basically, we get context info, convert it back to varchar, so it's human readable. And now, in case update or delete, instead of taking data from deleted or inserted metadata, we will provide as a first context information to get the right user information, who actually did the change. Let's update procedure and trigger. And test again. Now we will try to add product 2 with its price and comment executed by user 1. So insert got catched. We see new product with new details got inserted into history table. Now let's try to update the price and the comment. This executed by user 2. Okay, we are seeing that main table updated, history table have record as well with all details executed by user 2 and most important delete statement. Now we are initiating as user 3 the record got deleted from the main table and trigger catched delete statement finally with correct username. So this is very useful technique how to check who actually did the change on a table, especially when application talks to SQL Server using service account and there is no other possibilities to get that information using only SQL metadata. As a bonus thing, we can share context information between SQL Server sessions. So basically we can get context info from the original session, but also to check dynamic system view and extract that information if it's available. Here I filtering out information without context info set and let's see how we can read context info from different sessions. So I open new session, set context info to here is some secret I want to share from SPID, new SPID. Let's try to set the context. So this context information is set on SPID 62. Let's see if we can extract that information. And voila, we are able to see context info we set on different SPID and extract details what was said. So basically you can use this technique not only for triggers, but also to share some information between different sessions on SQL Server. Hope you find this helpful. And if you don't want to miss future videos and support my channel, please subscribe. Thank you.